Welcome to the beautiful Middle Island Country Club. This is one of my favorite spots on Long Island, guys. Middle Island Country Club is known for three nine-hole championship courses. That's right, 27 holes of golf spread across majestic 225 acres here in the middle of Long Island. You can't get any more central than this. Today we're gonna to meet with one of my good friends, Jeff Jimenez. We're gonna play around over here, just nine holes, because I don't know if our backs are gonna hold up for 18 holes. But Jeff, over at the Jimenez team at EXP Realty, this guy is the Shirley Mastic expert, loves, lives and breathes Shirley Mastic, as well as the rest of Long Island. Never mind the new construction that Jeff represents. He's putting together 40, 50 deals a year on new construction alone, guys. This is one of the top agents on Long Island. I'm looking forward to spending nine holes with him, talking about golf, talking about the market, talking about Bloody Marys and whatever else comes to mind. So it's tea time, baby. Come join me for real estate agents in golf carts drinking Bloody Marys. I'm Kyle Kelly, the associate broker for the island-wide team at Realty Connect USA. I've spent the last 11 years perfecting my real estate game, but unfortunately, my golf game has really gone to shit. This is my attempt to incorporate more golf into my work life. So hang on while we spoil a good walk while under the influence of real estate, talking about cocktails and talking about anything else that comes up with some of my closest friends in the real estate industry and hopefully some decent golfers. This is Real Estate Agents in Golf Carts Drinking Bloody Mary. Jeffrey speaking. Yo, Mr. Jimenez, how are you, sir? Hey, what's going on, buddy? How are you? Well, I uh, really got like two or three hours to kill. It's a beautiful day. I was thinking about hitting the club. You got some time to join me? Yeah, man, I can make that happen. All right, cool. Right over in Middle Island? Sounds good. I'll, right, be there. I'll see you in a little bit. Mr. Jimenez, what's going, what's going on? on, man? What's this? Are we here for? I thought you said tennis club. Uh, country club, kid. Oh, Golf, shit, baby. Bro. I didn't even bring clubs, man. <laughs> you know, don't worry. I always carry an extra set with me. Oh, lucky you, lucky you. I was ready to play tennis. <laughs> so we got about ten minutes before tea time. Sounds good. You ever played here before? Ah, first time here. I used to play over at Pine Hills. I used to go on, uh, like before real estate, I, uh, well, many moons ago, back when I was growing up, my uncle had a bagel store right in town in Shirley. So we would uh, we would often go after work, we'd go down to play a quick nine, you know, and just nice. shoot the ball around and have fun. Obviously have a couple of ones. Yeah, you're Shirley guy. Shame the Shirley Lynx isn't open anymore, huh? You know, it is a shame, but it also did develop, you know, quite a bit of, you know, opportunity for a 55 and older. There's a nice condo, yep. you know, there. And I actually there. have a listing coming soon. Hey, I love it. <laughs> oh, I've got a buyer. Let me tell you. There you go. Bring him on. Him. <laughs> <laughs> right? I have my, uh, my only hole in one was at Shirley Lynx. But now people say the course doesn't exist. Does my hole in one even exist? Yeah. The problem with hitting a hole in one. What's that? It can only go down from here. <laughs> I can't get any You've already than achieved that. it. Yeah, right? can't get any better than that. So. Well, hopefully today I hit a hole in one. That'll be a first for me. But, uh, <laughs> my handicap is my club, so we'll be all right. <laughs> so when was the last time you actually played? Uh, about 12 years ago. Yeah, so I'm, I'm sure I'll outdrive you, but don't worry, because I can't hit the ball for shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I'm, I might be uh, I might be not so bad this time around. Yeah? You think you're going to take me? I don't know, Kyle. We'll I mean, see. You may be the better realtor, but I might be the better golfer. So. <laughs> that might be the case, absolutely. So we ready for this? Let's go get it. All right, let's go. <laughs> yeah, man, it's, uh, it's been a while since I've been out on a golf course. How's business been lately? Balls out. I am busy as can be. All right. <laughs> but it's nice operating a good team. It's yeah. becoming a well-oiled machine because I just send them emails in the morning. This is what I need you guys to handle. And I get to be out here, you know? Yeah, I just brought on a transaction coordinator. Best thing I've ever done in my life. She handles everything. My, all my listing paperwork now. It's a phone call away, man. It's one of the best investments I ever made. She follows up with our clients, with our attorneys, with our bankers, both sides. It's. I have my new agents 
start as transaction coordinators. Uh -huh. So they ha they <laughs> understand idea. how to handle the transaction from start to finish, and I just built it out in a Trello checklist. Ha! I there went through during the shutdown, the entire process a realtor goes through to buy or sell a house. <laughs> it's a 126 step process, and I made a checklist of 126 steps based on where you are in the transaction. They move the Trello card along, they follow the checklist, and make sure nothing falls through the cracks. So we do that through uh, Skyslope. I mean, and it's just very simple. It's there, and then we have, for her, we, we have a very simple checklist, right? Yep. I don't know if it's 126 touches. That's, that's crazy. <laughs> 126 but. action items. Remember that if you're trying to sell my owner. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. Right? Imagine. Things. <laughs> Not where you want to be. <laughs> All right, why don't you show us the way? <laughs> so, poor, poor cart management, that's for sure. All right. Well, Kyle, did you see it land? No, it's in the tree I, with I the birds. I think it's in the tree. It's in the tree with the birds. <laughs> How do we incorporate more golf into our work day? Gotta go play more, that's all. How many holes did you say we were playing, Kyle? So I know I have all the steps lined out, right? So now it's just a matter of training them on the steps. And a lot of them are, call, introduce yourself to the attorney, introduce Absolutely. yourself to the lender, let them know you're the transaction coordinator, ask for an update. I built out email templates on every step of the transaction. So it moves to pre-inspection. The buyer or the seller gets that email, what to expect for the inspection. After the inspection, post-inspection, email goes out, this is what to expect now. Goes under contract, email goes out. And this is all going to your client? This is all going to client, going to lender, going to attorney, right? So everything in there is that checklist. Who do we need to contact? What, is it, what do they need to know? Right. What do so we need to know? In very process? very similar to our process, yeah. almost identical to our process, really. So, well, that's, that's you, all it is, you right? have them, processes, systems to me, and tools. To me, I, the one thing I like is that at the end of the day, on every day, I'm getting an updated report on every single transaction that yep. I have going on. Because I also do a lot of new construction, too. Right. So I got deals I don't close in for you know, a year. I got things that yep. don't come out until July 2022. Yeah, and that's so, why I look up. I use Skyslope as well for the document yeah. management, but then the transaction handling process, it's literally step by step. They're on cards right in front of me. I know where every one of my that's transactions great. are in that's the process. Great, I love yeah. it. You know, it's hard to not work so hard. Yeah. Hard work to not work. So I don't know about you, but I'm noticing this market, you know, especially with the multiple office situation and whatnot, a lot of buyers waive in the home inspection, which I never recommend, right? But it's it's a way to kind of entice the seller to say, okay, I'm gonna accept that offer. All right, what do you think about waiving the home inspection? I think it's a huge no-no. Uh, because at the end of the day, the home, like, Unless you're looking at, I mean, a brand new construction house, right. they're always going to find something. Even with new construction, you got to find something. I've had you vent pipes not being installed on new construction. Right. Yeah, I've had all kinds of things that have popped up at the last minute. I don't think that's the best idea. But what I do think it is, is that it's about the home inspector you hire. Absolutely. Right? Because if you hire the right home inspector, what's going to happen is they're going to be able to deliver bad news in a good way. Right? And not necessarily the fact that they're going to, you know, how do I say, not bad news, but like, look, every house is gonna have problems. Well, I expect them to be a realist, not an yeah. alarmist. Right? Exactly. <laughs> you know, like, hey, this is what you expect for a home 35 years old. Right? Exactly. <laughs> and I know that like, there are some real estate agents out there that like dread the home inspection. I look forward to it. No. Yeah. I look forward well, to it. Especially on the buying side. This is another chance to get to know the home that you just spent eight minutes in and made an offer on. Exactly. Right? Now you can go spend two hours there and, 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 and now learn with, about the home a little like, bit. Like I remember, remember doing home inspections? with like you know you would show up and like uh i mean like we did one together on auburn remember oh yeah we did one on australia and auburn and matt showed up and i don't even think the client was there no 
the client wasn't No, the ready. client couldn't make it, right? So yeah. make sure that home inspector's doing a detailed report, yeah. taking pictures of everything. Matt even uses video. Yeah. Speaking of Matt, so ah, Matt, Matt Rivera, right? Inspection yeah, Boys. Yeah, Inspection one, Boys, man. One yeah. of my favorite yeah, home he's inspectors great. out there. Yeah. You use him as well? I use him. He's responsive. He gets there. He's, you know, I love his team. He, they, they really know how to execute a good report. But the best thing about Matt is that I love the fact that he does not, he's not afraid to get on the phone and talk to the client. Yep. Even after he's been there. No, after he's time. done, the, the inspection's not over, right? Exactly. Let's talk about it. Let's go through it line by line if you need to. And one thing that Matt actually said on a home inspection that really, even after 11 years, I was like, I never really thought of that. It's a snapshot in time of what that home looked like when you made the offer and you moved to contract. Absolutely. Now, three months later, when you get into the closing table, you have a report that says this is what the home looked like. And you know, speaking of home inspections and Matt Rivera and the inspection boys, let's have a word from him now. Hi, we're in the inspection boys. Hey, I'm Matt from the Inspection Boys. Home inspections aren't child's play. We take home inspections serious. At the Inspection Boys, we have multiple inspectors on staff, so we could usually perform the inspection the same day, have the report delivered within 24 hours. For more information, you can find us all over the internet, TikTok, Instagram, Yelp, Google. Just look us up. Inspection, Inspection Boys! Kyle, I gotta ask, when do you think We've been in this crazy bull market, man, for like, it feels like three years almost. Yeah. Do you see an end in sight? Right now, I mean, I'm honestly, I look at the stats all the time. You know I'm a stats guy, right? We are 14% below our normal inventory level right now for the summertime, yeah. uh, which is typically a slow market anyway. A lot of people go on vacation. Uh, but we're 14% below our normal inventory level with a 260% higher demand level. How do you catch up? Interest yeah. rates. Foreclosure moratorium is going to be lifted. Okay, are they going to be able to foreclose that quickly to increase yeah. inventory? Yeah. Are people really in foreclosure status? No. You know? it's, it's false. It's pretenses. Yeah. Because we're going to go through the same thing. I see. My prediction is this, right? The whole concept that all, all of a sudden this huge round of foreclosure short sales is going to come about. And you see everybody on Facebook now. They're selling the, 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 the different courses, right? Yep. <laughs> it's not going to happen. We're not 08. No. It, 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 it's, it's, I honestly believe that the new average price going forward from here on out will oh. be 500. Yeah, you're not finding a $250,000 house on Long Island ever again. No. Never gonna happen. I mean, we've you'll see 350 precedent. and up. Yep, we've set that new president. The first yeah. time home buyer is a $400,000 buyer on Long Island. Absolutely. If you're not, you're in a small condo co-op. Condo or co-op, that's yep. it, you know. So let's see. All right, let's see if I can hit let's this. Play. What do you think this is about? I'm gonna go about 35 maybe. I asked you about this, you know, what are some topics you want to talk about? And you said gratitude is number one thing for you, right? Yeah, well it is because I'm grateful for everything that I've been able to accomplish in the short time that I have. I'm only in the business eight years. Wow. You know, okay. and I'm, I don't like to tilt my own horn, but I've, I've done well. You yeah, know, I've done, done really well. well. I feel like I've built great brands and, uh, you know, that that's all been just about being grateful for the opportunity to help people, the opportunity to, to, to meet great people like you and, you know, clients and lenders and mortgage reps and, you know, whoever it may be. But I look at it as if, you know, I'm, I come from a place of service, right? So I'm grateful to be able to serve someone. Exactly. And that's my mindset going into exactly. everything. All I know is that when I get up in the morning, I get up and I look to help people. I look to make it better. Nope. You get up in the morning, you do the same, right? And at the end of the day, all that matters to us is that we help people achieve what they're looking to achieve, right? right? So if you're able to, 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 to take someone, whether it be getting them pre-approved, fixing their credit, or getting them into the house of their dreams or out of the house of their dreams, right? It's, it, it, you have to appreciate the fact that they called you. The whole concept of gratitude and being grateful for not only the business, but also your family, your everything, right? Everything, just, just, just being grateful for today. Out, out here together. You know, like, that's a huge thing. Now, now let's be grateful for being able to hit a straight shot. I'm gonna be grateful for you on that. <laughs> let's do it. Ah, uh, you thirsty? <laughs> I could go for one. 
We could do a uh, Lost Ball Bloody Mary break. Sounds delicious. <laughs> right. So this Bloody Mary is brought to you by. Good morning. I'm Jamie Holmes from Reese's in Patchogue, 70 North Ocean Avenue, Patchogue, New York. We're here at beautiful Middle Island Country Club. I'm going to show you how we make our Reese's famous Bloody Mary. First, we'll start with our lemon. Just cut this up and just a little bit of lime. Just to balance it out each a little bit. These are delicious, easy to make at home. Use Tito's. Everybody seems to like their Tito's. Today we're using V8. Delicious. We're using Holy Schmidt's uh, horseradish from Schmidt's Farm. Absolutely delicious. Nice heaping wedge of that. It's a little celery sauce. Some Worcestershire. We're gonna add a little chalala. Just a couple of dashes, not too much. Olive juice. Here's our mixer here. You can either shake it up and mix it, or you can just go in and out. I'm a big fan of mixing it up. Can't wait to drink this one. Pepper and salt. Garnish with a couple of olives, a wedge of lime, and a wedge of lemon. A celery stick. And that's it. Back to you guys. Oh, I do like a good Bloody Mary. How about you? I love a Bloody Mary. The spicier, the better. See, I'm not a big spicy fan. I can do the horseradish, but I don't need the hot sauce in there. Yeah. I was actually out of the course one day. Oh, stopped at, uh, we were over at Indian Island, in Riverhead. And we stopped in for a Bloody Mary. The bartender didn't know what they were doing. They accidentally put A1 in it. Delicious. I'm using A1 in my Bloody Mary. So now. Well, that sounds actually my like <laughs> It was really a little, good. Give a little, little hint of something. Yeah. I love it. All right. This is, uh, this is good. gonna set us straight now. I'm not shaking. I'm still shaking a little bit. I need like six more drinks. I look at the mastics down by the water. Got some great views yeah. right out on the bay. Some of the best. You know, and I know you probably know a bit more of the history than I do, but I know like many years ago, attorneys, accountants, a lot of money people from Manhattan came in, bought it all up, mm -hmm. used it as vacation homes, and then eventually rented it all out. Yep. And that's what kind of destroyed the area was that it became just your not so desirable towns. Uh, but it's really made a nice rebound over the past few years, I think. So Quick story, when my father bought the house, I'll tell everybody this story. When I first started real estate, he, he said the same thing to me. He said, Jeff, don't tell anybody that this is going to be the next Hampton because I'm still waiting for that to happen since 89. <laughs> so <laughs> so what, what, what ended up happening was, is in, it, you know, a lot of, still, still to this day, you get a lot of the city folks that move out here because it's one of the last few places on Long Island that's affordable. Affordable, right by the water, right you by get, the beach. Look, you know? I, I live in Mastic still to this day. Um, I bought a beautiful house. Um, I'm, I'm about nine blocks away from my mother and father. Um, I pretty much bought the house based on the fact that, one, I wanted cheap taxes, and I also wanted to be close to the water. Now, I can see my boat from my back. I was going to say, you're a boater, right? From you my back that, door, that, right? So, yeah. like, I would keep my boat right in the Forge River Marina, but surely in Mastic over the course of the last you know, since I've been really focused and paying attention to it over the past eight years, I've seen a noticeable change. I've seen less rentals. I see the land, especially through this market, has been great for the area because a lot of the landlords cashed out yeah. and sold to single family, you know, single family, sold them to single family homes, not yep. for investments anymore. For surely in Massic, in Massic Beach, I see a, 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 a huge turnaround 
Um, I see Massey Beach, there's a huge push to redo downtown Massey Beach. Once we see the sewers come into the area, it's That's key, just, right? The, the infrastructure is needed. Well, it's the patch. We need it for the restaurants to yep. have the downtown districts like that, Patchwork. That's what happened in Patchwork. That's what happened Once we have that, Mobile, you'll so. see that go up, and then it will be the next thing. Hopefully. There you go. This is actually one of my favorite parts of the game is putting. <laughs> You know, my biggest thing is just, just getting the ball to go straight sometimes is my, my, my challenge. It's a very easy sport. It's what fun. you do is you hit it out there. <laughs> then you hit it a little closer. A little closer. You put it on, and then you put it in. That's it? Yeah, I don't understand why they make such a big deal out of this. Nah, it's not that hard. Yeah. One of my favorite things is to do is come out here, nice drink, nice company, blow off some steam, enjoy some Bloody Marys, and live that life. As long as we get it done before 10 a.m., right? Our clients don't even know. <laughs> That's right. Real estate doesn't start till 11. Cheers. <laughs> oh, I caught it. I caught it clean, baby. So, have fun. Getting hot out here. My phone's blowing up, your phone's blowing up. <laughs> I guess real estate started. <laughs> yeah. It's time for us to get back to work. Sounds like a plan. Let's finish this out and call it a day. Thanks, man. You're up. This has been a Sky Limitless Media Production.